Namaste, beloveds. This is Mother with Wisdom. It's been a good while since I have shared in my spiritual circle. And Wisdom wants me to clarify the word circle as a polarity aspect of the word circus. So, she wants us to really look at these two words and to put the word spiritual in front of them. First, a spiritual circle and understanding what that spiritual circle represents. It represents a unity, an unbroken line. It represents an equality. It represents a truth. It represents a respect of the natural order of things, the way it turns, the seasons and the cycles. And then Spirit has me wanting to speak to you on what a spiritual circle, circus, is. And a spiritual circus is something that is, you are able to observe that's out of order. And it is chaotic, but it still has a narrative for you to learn from. And so a lot of the things that you're starting to observe and bear witness to that are coming undone or falling apart, so to speak, is is really the listening aspect of your spirit hearing the spiritual call to observe and pay attention to more things and to be able to differentiate between the spiritual, the spiritual circle and the spiritual circus. Both are teachers. Both will teach you life. Both will teach you about existence. Both will teach you about balance and unbalance. Both will teach you about the seen and the unseen. And it's up to your content of character of where your perception goes in these two rings, so to speak. Okay, um, I am, I know the background and everything looks a little different. I am in California with my family, and as you see, my eyes are puffy and swole and everything, and if you hear a little baby in the background, that's my grandbaby. Um, and I'm just going to keep on going, beloved. I am in California with my greatest master teachers, my family, my 39-year-old son-in-law, my 38-year-old daughter, my six grandchildren, ages 17 to 2. I have been blessed to observe, absorb, receive, transmit, transform, and transmute with them. And as we exchange energy frequencies from the spectrums of unconditional love, from the highest to the lowest point. And, beloveds, I want us to understand the polarities of the highest and lowest, the spectrums and the frequencies of the highest and the lowest, the root and the celestial top or the summit of where we climb, the things that we have to actually become one with in our natural order of ascending and descending, in our evolution, in our growth. And we have to be present in this. And we have to be always receiving. We have to always be transmitting. We have to always be transforming. We have to always be transmuting. And that means a lot of things we cannot get caught up in the hearing, in the identification of the personal personality that wants to feel offended by each and every little thing. We have to get into the sacred space or that sacred circle where we know that everything is for our benefit regardless of how it's presenting, regardless of if it's the circus performing. 
we have to observe and see what is there for us to gain spiritually. From nothing is coincidence. Everything we we like to speak on synchronicity a lot, but all of this is divine order, beloveds. From the moment you began to open your heart to the higher frequencies and being able to observe yourself from a different perspective, from a more natural perspective, from a more wiser, celestial, higher perspective, from a more macro perspective than a micro perspective. Everything begins to open up for you because you become, you become unified and in union with everything. Let me keep going, beloved. This trip has indeed been a real spiritual journey for me. I have not seen, I have not seen them because of, I have not seen my grandchildren and family because of COVID. So being able to come um, this fall was a ble- such a blessing because I have, I have missed them so, I have missed them so much. And just to be, like I said, with them is a real blessing because I learned so much. There's so much to learn from just the energies themselves. They are spiritual incarnations. They are unique reflections of God. And each one of them teaches me. And and I'm just thankful to be able to be here and, and watch them, to observe them, to speak with them to interact with them, to love them and touch them and kiss them. And I realized how much that means because my mother passed and my children didn't get a chance to know her. And it means a great deal to the children because the elders can are able to give the children something that the parents are unable to give them in that moment. And when you have the parent and the grandparent or and even the great parent working, you have a unified village for those children. And those children become much more deeper, much more self-loving, much more nurturing human beings. And that's what we want for all of humanity. Let me keep going, beloved. Be careful of what you ask for. Be careful of what you ask the wisdom of existence for. Because it will not be what you expect from your micro perspective, but from a cosmic universal macro and micro perspective. I have asked for a pure heart, for maximum observation without judgment. I used to be a very judgmental person and I began working on myself, that aspect of myself, that need to feel that I had the right to judge, that it was my right to judge someone or to judge a situation. And that in my judgment, I was the one that was right and they were the ones that were wrong. And it didn't matter what they said or how they felt about it or how I presented it. And I learned that from my own family and mother and everything else. And we are who who we are, are, are associated with, you know? Whoever we've been around is what we learn to reflect and what we learn to display and what we learn to transfer and what we receive. Even if we say things and sometimes, well, I didn't mean it like that, but that's how that person heard it. 
that's how they were wired to listen to it, to receive it. And they took it personal, even though you didn't, what you said, you didn't mean in a personal way. You have to have the judgment to understand why I said that. And you have to be able to say, I did not mean it that way. So don't take it that way. Now, you can't make somebody not take something some way, but you can say, I didn't mean it that way. And if they choose to say, okay, and let it go, then it's okay and let it go. But some people will choose to harbor and, and build upon that and, and blow it up into something bigger than what it needs to be. And you have to understand that that's a defense mechanism. And that was taught to them through their conditioning. So it's when you understand judgment is you're comparing everything to you, to your experiences, to your existence, to what you know, to what you feel, to how you see things, to how it tastes to you, to your experiences giving no consideration to the other person's existence, their perception, their way of feeling, their way of thinking, their way of being, their conditioning, their heart, their ability to love, their ability to dissect or consume or digest information. You're, you're force feeding them your way and punishing them for it. So we really have to come, and, and my grandbaby put eyelashes on, so they all over the place. I didn't slept with them and, and everything. This is my first time, so excuse me and my eyelashes. <laughs> but just listen to the message, okay? Um, again, be careful of what you pray for. Because sometimes we ask for things. And the universe will give us what we asked for, but it's not in the form that we asked for it. It's not in the shape that we asked for it. It's not in the box that we wanted it to be in. And we have to unpack. The universe gives it to us raw, organic, and we have to unpack it. And we have to do it layer by layer. And sometimes color by color or frequency by frequency. And sometimes it's not until years later that it's completely understood. And you realize, whoa, I received exactly what I prayed for. I prayed for this and I got this. But this actually was exactly what I was praying for. So, beloveds. There's a higher intelligence than ours that directs order through chaos. Whether we can understand that or not, it's the polarities of weaving in and out, up and down. And you can't have one without the other. But you have to understand the spectrum of the frequencies. It's universal math. It's just like that, that line that we were taught with the zero in the middle and the negative integers of mathematics and numbers and alphabets on this side and then the positive numbers on this side and the adding of them equals negative and positive or whole numbers, depending on what you do. That is life. Um, be careful of what you ask the wisdom of existence for, because it will not be what you expect from your micro perspective, but for your macro and micro, seen and unseen, heard and unheard, form and formless, reality of existence, much higher than your use, much higher than you're used to. So you have to sit quiet with it 
and listen for a while. And this is a number of sequence, um, different things that Spirit gave me to talk about today, beloved. Um, so I'm just going to get into it. One, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. What does that mean? Well, beloved, it means that you can have all the good intentions in the world. And you can see things that others do not see clearly. Or you can see things or hear things or know things that others do not see, hear, or know in the manner that you do. And from, from a place of unconditional love, you want to share with them what you see, what you hear, and what you know. And sometimes that is accepted with an open heart and people are grateful for it. But at other times, people are, are in places and positions within themselves where they are not ready to receive. They are not ready to transmit. They are not ready to transform. And they are not ready to transmute. And you have to accept that because you've been there. And that is what is meant by you can lead a, war, a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. And you have to respect that beings, that spirits own path, their own cycle, their own season of growth. You cannot force it upon them. No matter how much you love them, you have the compassion to understand they have to get there on their own, just as you do. And there may be many things that will befall them, which you will see as detrimental or the wrong way or hurtful. But that is what that spirit needed in order to open, to expand its own conscious awareness. Let me keep going. Um, two, you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. And Spirit had me underline the word old and new on here because they are a complete justification. They are the deep spectrums of these frequencies of old and new. And using the dog or the god or the conscious awareness. You cannot teach an old conscious awareness, new conscious awareness. All of the old has to be emptied out. That's why the things that you're seeing taking place in this world right now, that's what's happening. That's what you're seeing in relationships. That's what you're seeing in resolutions. That's what you're seeing in situations that are culminating and happening and reckoning. And each of these things that's happening is for that individual to expand their own conscious awareness, whether positive or negative, is to take full accountability and responsibility for their spiritual incarnation and for their connection to everything in existence. There is no separation. What you do to me, you do to yourself. What you do to the earth, you do to yourself. What you do to the water, you do to yourself. What you do to the air, 
you do to yourself. What you do to your body, you do to the collective body. We have to come into balance. We have to come into the understanding of the ancient village once again, that ancient ancestral village, that everything was chaos outside of that village, but that village was order, the wisdom of order reigned within that village. And it kept chaos at bay, but it learned from chaos. It used chaos to keep order because it understood that chaos was a reflection of order. And they learned that in the star systems. They learned that in the cycles and the seasons. They learned that in the animals with the nature and the earth itself. And they kept stories that they passed down and then began to write down. And they communicated telepathically, heart to heart, before they communicated with the mouth and then they began to write things down. And it was only when things got written down that things could be twisted. Let me see That's the old and the new. So I believe that once again, as we are awakening and expanding our conscious awareness, we will begin to communicate with each other from a deeper place of hearing, listen, a deeper place of listening, listening from the heart, not the mind, listening from the spirit. And listening to wisdom, listening for wisdom, not for the mind chatter, not for the mouth, but listening for wisdom because we will have identified and recognized that frequency. And that's the frequency that we began to tune into. And we began to tune out all the all the circus noise. <laughs> Afro circus, Afro circus. We we begin to tune that out a little bit, okay? Because it's it's gotten too loud, it's gotten too noisy, and we realize that's wait a minute, that's a distraction from the circle, okay? From me hearing what's going on in the circle, I'm so busy over here looking at the circus. Bring your focus. But don't judge that circus because it has just as much to teach you as that circle does. It only talk, it only teaches a, in a different way, to a different aspect. It teaches to the outside. That circle teaches to the inside. Let me keep going, beloved. Three, a leopard will not change his spot. A leopard will not change his spots. And that just goes to show that some people will not will not change. No matter how much truth you give them, no matter how much verification you give them, no matter how much unconditional love you give them, no matter how much truth you give them, they are not going to change. They choose not to. They choose to remain in the lower spectrum. They choose to expand that frequency that is within themselves. If that's what they identify more with, it, it is not up to you to save them, to fix them, to manipulate them, to trick them. Hold on one second, beloved. Okay, sorry, beloveds, my, um, one of my grandbabies came home, I had to let her in. Um, 
where we were at was about uh, number three. A leopard will not change its spots. And that goes with you cannot make a horse um, drink the water. You cannot change, teach an old dog new tricks. That means you have to allow. Excuse me, this lash again, acting crazy. Okay. You have to allow. There you go. You have to allow um, the natural process of growth, the levels. And that natural process is different for each of us because there are things that take place. I often use the symbol symbology of a butterfly, the caterpillar and the butterfly morphing and changing. Um, that, but that caterpillar has to do all this work to prepare itself for the change. It does all this work of going around collecting the leaves and eating and getting everything it needs and building itself up and then forming this cocoon and chrysalis crystallizing itself, which means liquefying itself, and taking on a, on a completely different, morphing into this entirely different creature with wings that no longer crawls upon its belly, so to speak. And so it's a beautiful situation, and it's a beautiful understanding of everything that is taking place and beloved it's, it's about our growth and it's about accepting the situations that come and understanding how we move forward and also what we do to set ourselves back and there is a self-discipline that is involved in all of this that we have overlooked for centuries. We've been conditioned to overlook the unconditional love aspect of existence because of traditions, because of conditions, because of circumstances, because of hierarchies and rulership and so forth and so on because of boundaries that have been established on the earth. The earth is getting ready to change again. The boundaries that we recognize as North America, South America, Africa, the continent of Africa, the continent of Asia, so forth and so on. Those things are getting ready to change again. Okay? And, and what you're going to do is humanity going to once again say, this is my portion, and, and you can't come over here, and you have to stay over there, and you're foreign, and you're an alien, and you're this, and you're that, and you have refugee status. I'm on the planet with you. I'm a human being just like you are. What are you talking about? Well, my people came from here. And, and, and this border was given, this land was given to us in 3,500 B.C. and blah, 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 blah. Really? We are all incarnated star seeds on this planet. What does that mean? That means we are universal beings. We contain every, every speck of dust, every at an atomic level, at a particle level, at a molecular level. And for you to sit here and disassociate, that I'm not that. I'm superior to that. I have more of this in my configuration than you do. We have a very long way to go, beloved. We have a very long wow. way to go. But that's not judgment. That's discernment, and each of us needs to see it and realize it. We need to receive it. We need to 
transmit it. We need to transform it and we need to transmute it. Let me keep going. Number four, existence exists with form, substance, and without universal laws. Existence exists with form or substance. Existence exists without form and without substance. And all of this is governed by universal laws under the one. And the universal laws keep unconditional love in place. It enforces universal love through divine wisdom. And on my Facebook page, you'll find some very interesting posts today about wisdom speaking out broadly in the streets. And I've, I've encountered um, a few things. Let me, let me just get into this. Um, this is number five. Universe shouts from the streets. Proverbs Chapter 1, verses 20 through 33. And I'm also supposed, Spirit also wants me to bring in these three totems. The, be the beaver, the turtle, and the dove. And the beaver is coming from my Native American, if you want to say, horoscope or constellation or astronomical configuration or whatever, I'm a beaver in the Native American tradition of astrology. Um, and with that came great insight that had not been gleaned or harvested before by me. Um, and the pairing with the dove, which is the Holy Spirit, which is also a symbol of wisdom, and the turtle which represents Turtle Island, the Earth, longevity, patience of wisdom, the patience of wisdom. The beaver as well with water being conscious awareness and being able to dam it up and being able to free it and the cycles of fall and spring being deep, deeper, frequencies that you're able to get in touch with um, these these elements and these energies from these totem sources, from these spiritual beings that have their own metaphysical, quantum, spiritual, psychic, psychological messages and ways of being and frequencies that they receive, transmit, transform, and transmute. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot here, beloveds, and I'm not going to um, get too deep and too wild. If you want more of this, please come to my Facebook page, it's Valerie Ames, and there'll be so much more concentrated material there. Um, again, I'm not at home, so um, I'm able to print off stuff there that I'm not able to do here, and to share different things in a way that um, I'm kind of limited right here, right now with, but it is what it is, beloveds, and as you know, I so much enjoy sharing with us because you are my reflections. And what you reflect back to me, the light you reflect on me, helps me to observe all, not just myself, but all. And just as I was speaking of being here with my grandchildren, and they are my master teachers and my, my children, my daughter, 
my son-in-law. There's so much to see, to observe, to know when you are not caught up in your mind's personality, in your mind's frequency, in your mind's abilities to be so manipulated by what you think is being presented or what you think is being said or how you interpret something. When you are at a, when you are centered in your circle, you are grounded. You are not in that mind space. So you don't perceive, observe, interact or integrate from that frequency. You, you're, you're doing all of that interacting and being from a higher perspective. And so you engage in a different way. And it's not from a way of judgment. Again, it's from a deeper understanding, a wiser wisdom understanding of unconditional love. And again, you can have unconditional love and you can know it's unconditional love and you can offer that unconditional love but there are some that they're not able to receive it beloved they're just not in that space and just be patient be patient with yourself because how long did it i'm 57 years old and i'm just now getting here just now getting here just now starting to expand upon my conscious awareness beyond my thinking and conditioning mind, beyond that identity. I'm, I'm able to receive more light. I'm able to let it in. I'm, I'm able to recognize it as me. This is me. I'm this cosmic, these cosmic rays. I, I, I'm the receiver of them. I'm the transmitter of them. And I get to transform them based upon my own unique style and language. And I get to transmute what does not serve and to eliminate that or push that away or to recycle it and put it in potential, potential future, whatever frequencies. So beloveds, there's so much, there's so much here. There's, I guess there's so much here. And this is going to end it, um, but this episode or this particular um, video will be called Wisdom Speaks Through Mother Wit Wisdom. And again, that name was given to me a while ago. And it is amazing how it has evolved, how the the base, the foundation for that frequency known as mother with wisdom, the one that receives, the one that transmits, the one that transforms, the ones that transmutes, has been interacting with existence as existence in a state of conscious awareness that is expanding beyond what she ever imagined in this lifetime. But knowing that the dimensions are one, this is right where I'm supposed to be in, in this moment, 
in, in so-called time. And my perception is only expanding. And beloveds, um, as you begin to see so many things, fall away, allow them to fall away because they're being purified, they're being reformed. Allow existence to exist the way it needs to without your judgment because we do not see the whole picture. And sometimes a person has to to really suffer them, their own minds, their own addictions, their own choices in order to be able to observe themselves clearly. And there's nothing you can do to point this out there's nothing you can do to say, well, turn right here and don't go down that road. They have to encounter whatever they have to encounter. And it is unconditional love to allow them to encounter what they need to encounter, no matter how horrendous it seems. We have frequency. Frequencies that will incarnate again. And because of the things that you went through in this lifetime, next lifetime will be easier or better or different because of the things that you went through in this one. So you are not this static thing that, that is born and it dies and that's it. You are genetic material that is capable of resurrection and reincarnation and regeneration. And everything that you encounter in existence as existence forms you, expands your conscious awareness. And it's up to you which frequencies you choose to allow your expansion, your experience. And don't judge those who prefer the lower frequencies or those that prefer the higher frequencies or those that just want to stay in the middle. Allow existence to exist without judgment. Stay in the place of it's cooking. <laughs> it's not done yet, okay? We're, we're not getting to the finish point where we can put it on the table just yet. All right? So don't, are we there yet? All right, is it done yet? Are we ready to eat? <laughs> Unconditional love, let it cook. It's done when it's done. You'll know when it's done because you'll be sitting at the table eating. You'll know when you get there because you'll be there. You don't have to keep asking every five, ten seconds, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Quiet yourself. Listen to wisdom. She's already speaking always to nature. It's her nature to speak. It's her nature to be. It's her nature to be present. It should be your nature to identify her in all of her forms, in all of her formlessness. And it should also be your 
pleasure to receive her instruction. Never tell her to shut your mouth. Watch your mouth. What you talking about. That means you're in a vulnerable human space, identity that is lacking and limited in its own knowledge of itself. Knowing that you are with good wisdom, I like this. But when you say, watch your mouth, or I'm going to shut you up, but you don't know what you're talking about, or I'm not listening to you. You're separating, making distance, creating space. And that space, oh, it's sacred space. And you're trying to get some lessons within your sacred space. Positive or negative, it's, it's chaos or, or calm. It's going to happen. Because wisdom is going to teach you that you cannot separate from her. Okay, beloved, that is going to do it for me. And I just want to say again, namaste. It's been a while. And I love you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>